Hey, what's up, everybody? Hello, hello. My name is Peter, and this is Ruud, the, the Ruud. One and only Ruud Swan, indeed. So we've uh, invited him back on the live stream uh, because, well, for today we had a, a specific topic in mind, a specific uh, thing we wanted to talk about because a lot of the times when we do live streams and we show, you know, we do benchmarks for hardware and stuff like that, we want to show the performance live on the, uh, on the stream on the, as we're doing it on the uh, PC that we're yeah, doing the benchmarks on. And to do that, we are using, of course, the Afterburner uh, OSD on-screen display feature, uh, which, is, which is great. And it, it's very stable. It works quite, uh, quite well. We also see a lot of media are using it as well. Uh, mostly, it's in the bare bones configurations, though, which means just you know text. And, and these days, you, you can also have graphs, so it's it's good. And you can already customize quite a lot about it, uh, color, size, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, Root has uh, in in the downtime. I believe it was in 2020, right? You you told me 2020. Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, during the pandemic. Yes, and we, we had some extra time to to spend uh, on feedbacking backing uh, software, software things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazon so, Center was not launched yet. It was no. still Dragon Center. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. still in the works. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. and so we were also looking into uh, Afterburner, for example, and features yeah. that Afterburner was offering. And so this was one of the things that came up, and you you started tinkering with because you found out like, yeah. wait a minute, there's actually like, quite a lot you can do there. And so yeah. then you yeah. you came up with an overlay. Uh, and that's actually one of the default overlays that uh, we've been showing in quite a few live streams. Yeah. Um, and I mean, every time we do that, we have uh, people in the chat asking, hey, yeah. that's a nice looking skin. Where can I get that? How can I get mine to look like that? Uh, and so we thought, you know, let's do a live stream where, uh, well, firstly, we show you guys how to do that. So uh, Ruud is actually going to show you um, uh, like, because you can customize a lot more about it. So he's going to show you basically, you know, how you can customize it, where you can customize it, what kind of things you can customize. Uh, so, you know, if you want to uh, make your own skin or something, grab a pen and, uh, and paper, um, or at least, you know, make sure you, uh, <laughs> you you fire it up uh, along with us. So maybe you can click along and uh, and, and do it as we uh, do the tutorial, let's say. Uh, but next to that, if you don't feel like doing quite as many um, actions, let's say, or spending such a long time on, on you know, making it your own customized version. Uh, Ruud has also been kind enough to uh, prepare a basically ready-to-go version for you guys, which uh, is uh, available on a, a OneDrive link that we've put under our uh, YouTube um, video, the live stream, um, and which can also be um, uh, obtained in the chat uh, on YouTube and Twitch by typing exclamation mark overlay uh, then the link should be shared. Um, and he will also show later on uh, during the live stream uh, how you can actually implement that. Let, well, let's call it a skin or a profile, but yeah, how to basically just set it up. And that's actually just, if you apply that, it gives you the, the basic layout that you see. Um, and so it's a very easy way of, of like, you know, get, getting that uh, nice layout without actually having to do a lot uh, for yeah. it. It's a nice starting point, and you can yes. customize it to your own liking. So yeah, yes, yes, just to get you started. Yeah. Exactly. So we've you know we've got the easy version for you guys, and we uh, also have the more advanced version. Um, also, uh, during today's live stream, we have a giveaway. Of course, you can see it over Root's shoulder there. We are giving away a couple of uh, Steam wallet codes, of course, during the live stream. Uh, so yeah, to do that, you can, uh, or to, to have a chance to win, you can go to amazon.com slash two slash insider, as you can see, oh, there it is. Um, or you can, uh, I believe the chatbot should be pasting the link, the Gleam link to the giveaway every five minutes. Um, so yeah, there you can also go and uh, you know participate uh, perform a couple of actions. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, let, let's get into it. Um, maybe before we start, for those who are not that familiar with uh, Afterburner, maybe um, we, we should show them, uh, I prepared like two slides, I believe, right, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so if you have them, you have them ready? Hey, there we yeah, go. We yeah, we do. So basically, uh, what is MSI Afterburner? What does it offer? Uh, it, it was uh, first uh, created by the developer uh, as a tool called uh, Riva Tuner. Um, I, I do believe it's still, well, there are still some aspects that are called that even. Um, and it offers uh, uh, overclocking capabilities, uh, both manual and uh, for NVIDIA cards, something called OC Scanner, which is like an automatic tool, which will try to find uh, a good uh, voltage, uh, was it? 
voltage, voltage frequency temperature curve, curve yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it will try to find like the optimum curve uh, at its disposal by uh, doing some, some scanning, let's say. Um, you, it, it, it's also very useful for one of the things we're going to use today is the, the monitoring function. So it, it logs and displays a lot of uh, um, yeah, hardware characteristics and, and sensors. Uh, it does this using RTSS, which is short for, uh, or an abbreviation for Riva Tuner Statistics Server. Uh, you'll see later on when you're installing uh, Afterburner, it will also ask you if you want to install this other program called Riva Tuner Statistics Server. If you want to uh, monitor hardware and uh, use the OSD feature, then you will have to install that. Um, it's a very small thing. It's you know, it's not bloatware or anything. Um, it's only twenty-two megabytes. It's there you go. It's incredible that they can fit it in yeah. such a small yeah. package. It's it's very efficient. Uh, yeah, very efficient. efficiently yeah. coded and yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, another thing that Afterburner can allow you to do is uh, adjust fan curves or set custom fan curves. Let's say. Uh, so that's also quite useful uh, in case you're, you know, you're not happy with the uh, the, the uh, factory settings, let's say, or you want a more uh, aggressive fan curve or a more silent one. Um, it can also offer uh, video capture capabilities. Um, I personally have not really used it for that for a very long time. I do believe the feature is called Predator, um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of video capture. Uh, programs out there, that, but it's included. Uh, it also, because of the overclocking functionality, usually when you do a little bit of overclocking, uh, after you set it to a certain speed, you also want to do some uh, stability testing uh, to see if the overclock is stable or not. Uh, for that, the tool of Combustor, it's basically a, a, a customized version of um, the well-known Fuzzy Fair donut much. of hell, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, also known as uh, uh, oh, I've lost the name now. Furmark. Uh, Furmark. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's basically a, a Furmark uh, version that's included, uh, which is called Combuster. Where you will see that later on as well, uh, yeah. for st stability testing purposes. Uh, and also, uh, it has uh, the ability to uh, store multiple profiles. So if you want to have a profile for very silent uh, gaming, you know, or, or I don't know, uh, the office work, so that it's you know completely silent, fan curve is uh, just uh, very low and stuff like that. Uh, but also another profile for ultimate performance and gaming, uh, you can do that. It's quite easily uh, uh, selectable and switchable that way. Uh, and as you can see in the background there, it also has a, a really nice array of skins already. So there's probably something to your liking there. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, a little bit of a timeline there. Uh, starting from 2009, uh, together it was actually linked. We were looking this up earlier today as well. Uh, it was linked to a, uh, a product launch back in the day, which was the GTX 275 uh, Lightning graphics card which is all about extreme overclocking back in the day. Uh, that, that was the initial elite, uh, release of the uh, MSI Afterburner branded version of the software, uh, which was version of 1.0. And after that, I mean, a lot of stuff uh, started happening. So uh, things like, and I think this is one of the, the greatest things about Afterburner. One, it's completely free. And second, uh, it also, it supports uh, pretty much all GPUs. Um, not sure about Intel, by the way. I haven't ever tried that, but uh, in the past, at least, and, and up until now, it's at least uh, both NVIDIA and AMD that are supported. So um, doesn't really matter which, you know, team green, team red, doesn't matter. Everything is supported. Also, non-MSI graphics cards. Um, 2011, custom fan profiles, uh, which is a great uh, addition. Uh, the hardware yeah. monitoring was added in 2012. Uh, 2013, the uh, OSD feature, which we were talking about today as well, was added. Uh, 2014, uh, you know, enhanced voltage controls. So that's really important for overclocking, of course, not just the clock controls, but also the voltage sliders. Um, 2015, the video capture and streaming uh, got added. Um, so yeah, you can see there's, there's a lot of development going on there. 2016, uh, hardware accelerated video encoding. So it's also got to do a little bit with that video capture and streaming, of course. Uh, the uh, compatibility with Riva Tuner Statistics Server was uh, only, uh, I want to say, added in uh, 2017. So that's uh, quite late, actually, in the development. I think they just separated the part of the the overlay part into Riva Tuner Statistics Server. And that might be. Yeah, yeah. And, and the overclocking part. In that the they just split it off. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like the, that functionality was there 
starting in 2013. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, the on-screen display and hardware monitoring really wouldn't work. It needs that statistic server to keep yeah. track of all the uh, sensors. But before that, it's probably one package, and then it was two yep. separate packages, who, which you can also install just the Riva Tuner statistics server without the afterburner. Yeah, that yeah. could very well be. And uh, in 2018, uh, the uh, which was an NVIDIA feature, the OC scanner, basically an algorithm that they uh, introduced and, and made available to everybody. Yeah. Um, and we. Well, well the, the programmer of MSI Afterburner uh, uh, programmed that into, integrated that into uh, MSI Afterburner as well uh, yeah. to be uh, an easily accessible feature for the NVIDIA graphics cards, and it's still available to this day, yeah. uh, which is a great uh, feature as well. Makes it quite easy to get the most out of uh, your GPU. Back in the day, in 2018, it, you, know, you were able to, with overclocking, get a bit more out of your GPU typically than you can do these days. Mm. These days, they're already quite well optimized with a GPU boost uh, algorithm from NVIDIA in their case. Well, you can um, still use the, the VF uh, curve uh, yeah, yeah. utility to under undervolt it a little bit. Yes. So yeah. getting it more efficient exactly. is also possible, yeah. Yeah. not yeah, just yeah, overclocking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we and also course, demonstrated that in the efficiency uh, yeah. stream. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I remember, was it the 4080 or 4090, maybe the 4080 live stream. We also did a similar thing where we uh, undervolted indeed by. Um, I, I think you power limited it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah. It yeah really, that's it also possible. It was with, technically uh, yeah. not undervolting, I guess. It yeah. was power limiting, but it, it has basically you can the do same both. effect. Yeah. 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 So, so limit basically, the power, power limit, set a power limit, and then yeah. also um, with the same frequency, uh, slightly lower voltage. Usually that's still stable. Yeah. And uh, yeah. depends on the hardware, of course. On the GPU or the silicon lottery. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, I see in the chat people saying, eh, back in the day they came in a CD. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so, I'm not sure if they still do, actually. I don't think we put CDs in the box anymore since no. a couple of generations. No. Uh, because everybody's, uh, everything is very easily yeah. downloadable these days. Um, by the way, we, yeah, we, we'll. Uh, not pay quite as much attention to the chat today uh, as usual because we want to kind of stick to the story so that if people are watching this video later on at some point, especially during the uh, the whole, let's say, tutorial side of things, uh, so that it's very easy to follow and, and you could just easily get to the point that you need to know. Hopefully um, it's easy. I don't know. <laughs> well, it should be. I mean, you, you, you've, you've worked through it, right? So you, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah, the, yeah. you're the expert in that regard. Um, Okay, so that yeah, that was a bit of a yeah. quick overview of what Afterburner is and and kind of the timeline of what uh, you know what it supports and when it was added. Uh, maybe Ruud, you can now show the uh, uh, where you can download it uh, because that's I mean you can download yeah. it from a lot of places, uh, but honestly we we kind of want to um, draw your attention to especially I mean if you're going to download it, download it either from MSI.com. Uh, or from guru3d.com because yeah. uh, those are the only two sites basically that are, uh, let's say, the, the first line of uh, distributing. Uh, all the others are, you know, it's, it's a bit of a risk. Uh, I mean, there have been some, let's say, fake or corrupted versions of Afterburner before. Uh, that were offering this software. Uh, however, they uh, could include some malicious software. I believe it was mining software at the time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a bit dangerous. So uh, if you're going to download it, please uh, download it only from MSI.com or uh, Guru3D.com. Uh, other websites, I mean, they might be legit, but it's just it's a bit of a risk. So. Uh, and we just keep always keep it updated, so always the latest version of Afterburner should be available uh, on those sites. Yeah, there you can see, of course, we always try to highlight. Uh, it's uh, according to a lot of the tech media, uh, and it, it shows in their in the reviews as well the fact that they use it most of the time. Uh, it is kind of the the best when it comes to uh, overclocking utilities, uh, but also the hardware monitoring uh, is is quite uh, reliable and, and works really well overall. Yeah, one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's not perfect, but it's uh, it, it's as Ruud said, it's pretty much the, the best that there is uh, available. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, it's, we we link it to our graf graphics cards because that's really what it was uh, uh, first well made for and uh, envisioned to support. Um, yeah, as we mentioned, I mean, here there is a bit more on that landing page. You can find it if you if you Google uh, MSI Afterburner. Uh, you can directly go to the uh, to this landing page, and it will explain a bit more both like the uh, overall yeah. uh, overclocking uh, manually, and here is, there is a part about the OC scanner that literally yeah, one click overclocking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there is a the whole a whole blog basically and a video to explain video. how you do that, how you use it. Um, so a lot of things that make it easy. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and then uh, that's pretty much what you need to know. Um, we've done a live stream before about how uh, like the basic version of the on-screen display feature uh, can be activated, can be uh, included. Um, and so, yeah, if you want to know that, uh, th there's a whole live stream about it. You can find it on our channel. Uh, just, I think, if you search for Afterburner OSD, you should be able to find it. It was a couple of years ago we did that live stream. Uh, but that didn't include the, the advanced, the fancy skin that, uh, that Arut made. Um, so, yeah, maybe just get to, uh, let's, let's get to that part. Um, yeah. Let's uh, start with downloading Afterburner, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, let, indeed. So, we're really going to start from, like, scratch, uh, showing you guys what you have to go through, basically. And, and uh, when you just start, uh, you know, install a fresh copy and of the latest version. So, this is, uh, this is important, though. Here you can see that there's two elements, indeed. And so, uh, I think by default, the uh, Reva Tuner statistics server is checked, uh, yeah. like, is um, yeah, it, it will ask you to uh, to install it or not. As you can see, the full package is less than 66 megabytes, so it's really small. Really small, yeah. Yeah, you just click through it. There's no hidden, like, oh, but, you know, you also want to install something in different software. There's nothing included like that, so it's really, um, yeah, clean in that regard. There is some license agreements, of course. You can also download the Riva Tuner statistics servers uh, separately. Yeah. If you just want the overlay uh, to use the one we, we uh, send in the description of YouTube. Um, that's also what I'm going to use as a starting point, and then we just try to modify that part a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe indeed um, after this, I also always uncheck the readmes. I don't want yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. So this is the, the default, skin, default um, skin, right now yeah. at least. I mean, it changes every now and again. Um, uh, maybe you can show uh, some of the, uh, yeah. like the, the basic functionality of, uh, of so Afterburner. So basically here, here it says where, what the voltage and the uh, memory and the GPU clocks are doing, the temperature. Um, I'm not sure how to read this uh, diagram, but uh, <laughs> this is what it's actually doing now. So since we're only doing like 2D, it's a, it's a desktop, uh, it's not 3D yet. Um, and so the GPU is mostly uh, doing nothing, it's idle. Uh, idle. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so if you want to uh, change stuff like the clock frequency and overclock it, you can uh, use this slider. Yep. And uh, memory clock. So that's uh, the memory of the graphics card. Yeah. Uh, this cannot overclock the CPU or the, the motherboard's memory. Uh, it's uh, just a, a graphics card uh, overclocking utility. Oh. Um, most of the overclocking uh, for the motherboard and the CPU and stuff, and uh, the main memory, uh, you can do in uh, the motherboard's BIOS or uh, uh, a little bit in uh, MSI Center. Uh, yes. Or other programs like Intel XTU, XTU, yeah, X extreme uh, tuning utility, extreme yeah. tuning utility, yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or uh, Ryzen Master for AMD CPUs. Yeah. Um, uh, also, the the fan. Um, this part is called fan, but it's also power limit. So the power <laughs> limit yeah. is uh, attached or linked with this button to the temperature limit. So normally, the NVIDIA graphics card will. Um, uh, start to uh, limit its power and limit its <coughs> clocks um, when it's reaching 84 degrees uh, centigrade and uh, you can stretch that a little bit to up to 88 so yeah. there's more room if you're doing overclocking um, you can increase the power limit but you can also increase the temperature limit a little bit yeah. um, here you can uh, save some profiles if you want to do uh, underclocking, overclocking, uh, maybe different uh, fan profiles. Uh, the fan profile itself is uh, under this one. Yes. Yep. <coughs> so here you can set up the, the fan speed according to the uh, GPU temperature. And uh, so this is the the one out of the box, right? This is what it's yeah. showing is the fan curve that it's uh, this card has gotten uh, from the factory, let's say. No, no th this is the default from the program. So oh, this from is the program. still the software oh, okay. uh, fan profile, the, mm. the 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 hardware one or the one from um, from the the the, 
the, v the graphics the card factory, yeah. uh, bias oh, yeah, yeah. is different because okay. it has zero fan uh, um, mm. profile. So you're right. Uh, yeah, the zero frozen. It, it's already yeah. using the software one, but if you don't want to, then just click apply, and then it's back to normal. Yeah. And if you are um, doing a lot of stuff and you think, oh my God, I, I want to go back, just press this button and yeah. it's uh, back don't to panic. reset. Yeah, exactly. That's all. Uh, very convenient. Um, so if you have a custom fan profile or an auto automatic one, just press the A. Mm. Uh, you can switch uh, easily. Um, and this is a reset. Uh, the curve editor that's easily accessible in this skin. Mm. And uh, what you can do is lower uh, some voltages, or uh, I believe you can even lower the whole curve yeah. or tilt it in this case. And you can play around with this if you know um, how far you can stretch it a little bit. Yeah, then, but this uh, is, to, to be clear, this has got nothing to do with fan curves. This is no. the voltage frequency curve. So yeah, basically it, that's uh, uh, playing with the uh, both the voltages that the card is, is using or allowed to use, let's say, yeah. and the frequency it can reach yeah. at any given voltage. Yeah. So this is really uh, has got to do with the, the clock speeds. And if you, I mean, to be clear, if you mess this up, it's not going to destroy the card, no. but it could cause stability issues. So you could yeah. get a you know a black screen or something. It could start flickering, uh, but it's nothing that cannot be fixed. So it's nothing no. uh, that scary, let's say. Yeah. If you restart, then everything is back to default again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You might notice, by the way, that volt at the top there, voltage, uh, z says zero millivolts uh, at the at the very top. Yeah. We need to enable some stuff. I'm not yes. sure if this card will. Mm. Yeah, allow it it. unlock yeah. voltage control. Yeah, and monitoring. That's monitoring. Yeah, it is also yeah. good to have. Well, the monitoring part, if I remember correctly, is the part that uh, is showing at the top uh, as the th the third down. Let's say the voltage. Th that's voltage monitoring, I believe. Yeah, but I think it also pops up in in the yes. extended yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. hardware monitoring. Uh, yes. So indeed, you just clicked on it very quickly, but maybe you can if you close that again. There's a couple of things on the left side there as well. The bottom yeah. one, indeed, is the, the bottom uh, one is a very useful the hardware one. monitor. Yeah. Hardware monitoring, yeah. And that opens uh, like the, the complete overview of all the uh, sensors, let's say that the uh, afterburner can, or well, actually, I say afterburner, but this is actually uh, a Riva Tuner Statistics Server data being displayed. So th it's actually a Riva Tuner Statistics Server running in the background that is collecting all this data, let's say, and logging it. No, I, I think. Uh, they they both have very similar uh, sensor data, so I mm. think this can also run without okay. the Riva Tuner one. Okay. But if you want to uh, uh, show it in in, in an overlay in a game, then yes, you will need the Riva Tuner one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, here you can see uh, we've shown this a couple of times in the past. But there's a lot of things, not just of the graphics card, which of course that's the main thing that Afterburner is for. Yeah. Uh, but it actually shows a lot of different things there as well. Uh, so there's also stuff about the well, that's that's the GPU there indeed. Uh, by yeah. the way, if you have, for example, a uh, um, what is it um, integrated GPU on your uh, uh, on your CPU, let's say, so a, a graphics chip on your CPU, uh, that will also show up there as because you will have GPU one and GPU two. Uh, actually, this one might have that because I do see a little bit. Of, yeah, th that, that arrow there. So there it shows you. Actually, there's a. This is an Intel chipset. Uh, so there's a UHD. Uh, what is it? Seven ten? I can't read. Seven seventy. Oh, seven seventy. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the built-in one. Obviously, that's the iGPU on the uh, uh, Intel chip. Um, and so yeah, you do need to make sure if you have two GPUs there that you you are you've selected the right one. Uh, otherwise, you, you might be a bit thrown off by the data it shows you. Uh, but yeah, there it says a lot of things. It also like CPU usage, uh, uh, clock speeds, um, you know, thermals, uh, all, a lot of things it can it can read out. Mm -hmm. uh, it will even do some uh, readout of power, uh, as you can see there at the bottom, CPU power. CPU power. Yeah. But I'm not sure because you, I think you mentioned that's not always the most accurate, right? Well, um, at the moment it's it's working quite well with the current uh, CPU lineup, but. Once there is a new platform introduced, yeah. it, it takes some time to, to before Afterburner also knows that platform. So right. uh, other tools like HW Info usually are updated more frequently and uh, earlier with, with new launches of uh, CPU platforms than, uh, for example, Afterburner, because Afterburner is updated with 
uh, GPU launches, not with CPU launches. Yeah, correct. And, yeah, therefore, uh, also the, the programmer needs time to get his hands on a new platform to yeah. test everything. Hey, that, so that means, especially in regards to the uh, CPUs or, or new chipsets, uh, it can lag behind a little bit on that, uh, on yeah, that side. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about this is it also works on laptops and stuff. So if you want to yep. monitor laptops, yep. you can also do that. It, it is, however, as you, you mentioned it earlier as well, but I have also noticed in the past when I tried to install this on laptops, it can be that it's a, uh, some options are more restricted. So it, it Yeah, the overclocking part doesn't work. No, no exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you, you might have, um, yeah, you might have limited, uh, some limitations that you have to yeah. work with or, or some laptops no. don't uh, show oh. the, the fan no, uh, the speed fan controls. No, the fan is not controllable by yeah. the user or yeah. at least not, yeah, not in an easy way. Yeah. Uh, except through an, an MSI's case, uh, you need MSI center software to yeah. be in control of the fans, and most of the part is done by the uh, user scenarios in MSI center. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bastardock saying, oh, my laptop doesn't even monitor things correctly. Yeah, indeed. So in some cases, it, it doesn't work correctly. I mean, you have to remember that this uh, software has primarily been made for the uh, uh, dedicated or discrete GPUs, let's say. So it, yeah, it's yeah. the full-size GPU. So it, it works on laptops uh, to a degree, uh, and that's like a bonus, uh, but it's not really one of the stated goals of this yeah. software, sadly. So yeah. the, the, uh, the overlay I provided uh, uh, through the, the, the link uh, uh, at the YouTube uh, description, uh, that's this one, uh, also works in, in MSI laptops, at least I've tested three of them, yeah. uh, which is not a whole bunch, but <laughs> <laughs> at least they were. <laughs> uh, uh, Intel and NVIDIA based, as that's the most what we sell as uh, MSI, uh, as being as MSI. And, yeah. But uh, on the desktop, I also tested AMD CPUs, AMD GPUs, and different generations as well. So uh, for uh, there are some limitations, and I will explain when we are uh, opening yeah. the. Uh, the overlay. But let's, I mean, also maybe a little bit of a statement here, but you, uh, because y your job is partly to uh, help prepare and test and verify uh, hardware for, for MSI as well, like before, during reviews and, and yep. stuff like mm -hmm. that. So uh, you, you really need your, your data to be accurate, right? Yeah. And y you in your job are actually relying on, uh, well, this software partly in combination. I mean, for the GPU, it's mostly, it will be this software. Yeah. Um, and then for the CPU, you, you, you do mix it up with, uh, uh, well, you've got it on the desktop yeah. there as well, Hardware Info, for example. Yeah, HW Info is the yeah. one we use all the time for uh, yeah, monitoring sensors that Afterburner cannot detect. So yeah. um, I, I can also show you the, the setup I'm using at the moment. Let's close this one for a moment. So at the moment, we're using an MSI motherboard, the MAG B7760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, yep. and an RTX 4070 Gaming X Trio uh, with a 13600K i5 CPU, uh, some uh, two times 16 gigabytes of DDR5 uh, 6000 uh, uh, from Kingston, and an MSI M470 SSD. So this is the uh, the hardware page of uh, HW Info, yeah. and of course, what we use in our job mostly sensors. is the sensors page. Yep. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff you can monitor, and the easy part or the the, the, the convenient part of this software is that you can log it to a file, yep. and if you log it, you can always track back. Yep. Uh, if something goes wrong, you can see okay. Here I see the, the performance or the, the clocks go down, yeah. the power goes down, the temperature shoots up. Oh, I probably did something wrong with the cooling. Yeah. So that, that's how we use the software. So yeah. the overlay is basically an extension because uh, during the game you cannot see the sensors. Yeah. So if you have an overlay that shows you the sensors that are uh, important to you, then you can see what's going on during the game or during the benchmark in the game. And that, that's how we use it.
And so the really cool thing about it is that indeed it's not even limited, uh, the overlay function, the OSD, uh, is not even limited to uh, only what, for example, Reverse Tuner uh, Statistics Server is logging. Yeah. Uh, you can actually uh, include sensors or data from other programs as well, which is yeah. what Ruud yeah. did in, in his version uh, to, to kind of incorporate the best of two worlds, let's say. Yeah. Um, and he'll show you how to do worlds. that later on, actually. The best of four worlds is so uh, four, actually. Well, five. There you go. Uh, the, the fifth one, I'm not sure about. So, okay. well. <laughs> but I will show you what's possible. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, but that's a little bit more advanced, indeed. So, um, yeah, I mean, th this is to give you some overview. Now, if you, I mean, you've now installed Afterburner and, and Reva Tuner Statistics Server uh, as a clean install. Can you show, oh, yeah, so maybe indeed, uh, yeah, continue with, so that's the OC scanner feature. Yeah, it, it takes a while, so we're not going to do that now. It's about 15 minutes from, uh, if I, memory serves me right, if you want to do one scan uh, operation, something yeah. like that. I mean, it takes time because it, it, what it will do is it will go through that list of that curve, basically, yeah. uh, one by one, and it will see at each point, like, okay, how far can I stretch this? And it will, like, uh, dynamically adjust the curve as it uh, does the testing. Yeah. Um, so that's why it takes a while, because it really needs to go through all those different data points, let's say. Yeah, of course, it also has a, um, an info. Uh, the, this is the, the yep. version of the afterburner we're using at the moment. Yep. Um, and also, there's a, a shortcut link to uh, Combuster, and it's already installed. So um, yep. this is basically the uh, MSI branded Furmark. And yes. I'm not sure what this does. Oh, it's just it goes the to page. the landing page. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, very good. <laughs> very useful, very convenient. <laughs> well, I mean, if there's an update, because I think one of the things that this software doesn't do is tell you uh, if there's an update, right? It doesn't. Uh, you, you can check, and it's doing that weekly by default. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't pop up like, you know, uh, reminders or something or, or anything like uh, that it says, hey, uh, there's an update available only yeah, indeed. Yeah, it does. If you start it up and you still have an old one installed, then it will say, hey, there's a new one available. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 But it so won't pre it pre download it or anything, so it, it will only notify you. Um, uh, it, it will o open the page on the yeah. website, so yeah, you, but still you still have to need manually to, download yeah, it. Yeah, you still need to download yeah. it yourself. Indeed. Uh, yeah. it, it doesn't, it goes to the MSI uh, uh, yes. page as well. So, yeah. 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 Uh, also there, by the way, in general options, maybe uh, so for some people, if you want to have the uh, uh, overclock or your settings or your fan curve applied, uh, whatever, you know, fr from... Yeah. Um, from boot on, let's say, and, and you don't want to have to start Afterburner every time manually to do that. Uh, indeed, there's an option that uh, Afterburner starts and applies its settings, let's say, with together with Windows. Uh, so that's also quite uh, yeah handy, let's say, for people who, who want to kind of automate that part and forget about having to do that yeah. uh, manually. And of course, start minimizing it so it's not you know it's not in your face. It's just somewhere in your taskbar, tucked away. So uh, yeah, a lot of settings actually there. Indeed, you can uh, you can do uh, yeah. fan well, settings. Indeed, well, you need first the, need to yeah, enable user defined control, control if you want to do something yeah. with it. Monitoring, we will come to that in a second. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and we also have the 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 OSD, so the on screen display. You can t turn it on and off. Yeah, uh, hide it. You can set some uh, hotkeys there. Yeah. Uh, you can also display the system time. And Which is, I mean, if you want to keep an eye on uh, or, you know, track time, let's say, while you're gaming, you, most games don't have a clock uh, on the screen. So this is this is really useful. I found, for example, if I want to kind of keep track, like, uh, okay, but I have until a certain time to, to play a game or something, you can actually display it on the screen. So, yeah, that's pretty nice. And some frame limiter, frame rate limiter <laughs> uh, settings. Yeah. And uh, not sure about this one, though. Uh, Server blocking, I also don't know about that no, one. I've never sure. used yeah. that myself. There's also a benchmark built in, so it will log to um, a file uh, where you can see the 1% uh, lows and the 0.1% lows and stuff like that. Um, and uh, you need to start and stop it, so it's not a fixed uh, fixed time duration, but you, can, uh, yeah, you have to manually stop it as well. Hmm. Uh, uh, just to be clear, this isn't. It, it doesn't start a 3D program no. for you, right? It's not linked no. to any program. So it's basically just saying, hey, if you start a game, for example, and you want to do a benchmark, what it will do is it will, during that, uh, when you start it until you end it, it will record all data in a file, it will log it for you, and then you can review it later. Yeah, that's, that's basically, basically it. what it does, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also use that data and 
put it in the overlay. It's also in the overlay that I provided. So yep. uh, we'll show you later as well. Yes. Uh, I've got screen capture. Screen capture. Yeah. yeah, and then you can have basically just screenshots, right? Yeah, yeah screenshots. Um, the the, uh, the video capture and the screen capture uh, was in the days that that Windows didn't have that yeah. built in yet. So uh, now you could. It's do kind that. of a legacy, indeed. <laughs> yeah, uh, and also the, mean, the video capture. I, I didn't yeah. use the uh, the MSI Afterburner uh, version that much because no. it uh, also has some limitations uh, on video format. And uh, this is from the time that that yeah. It, it's yeah, it wasn't common commonplace yet so yeah uh, now you can do it in the graphics driver you can do it in steam you yeah. can do it in windows uh, game bar uh, stuff like that so there's multiple options yeah uh, uh, and maybe this one is not that much needed anymore no so it's, profile, it's more like a legacy yeah. feature that's still in there indeed exactly yeah you can use it if you want yeah. but yeah uh, there are it, there are multiple options. nowadays yeah. there are other possibly better uh, yeah. well probably even better uh, options available yeah, you can also select uh, hotkeys uh, to switch between profiles. Yep. Uh, and of course, the user interface. I think um, many people oh, yeah. still remember this interface. I mean, I'm not even sure. Was this like the original interface? It, it's one of the first, and yeah. it, it lasted for a, a long time, so several years. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this is the one I know from like yeah. the first time I saw it. That, that's how it looked. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. We had some Dragon Center, Dragon, oh, dragon there Army, were, yeah. Yeah, this one. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is what, you know, to go together with, uh, I think, our, our first gaming, was it the 700, GTX 700 series was our first gaming series? Uh, it's possible, I'm, I'm not sure. So that's, you know, the red yeah. accents and the dragon, and indeed, uh, so it's a bit more themed indeed. Uh, this is the, yeah, this is the one I, I most often use these days, but that's just because I got used to it uh, also after a couple of uh, years. This one's really our uh, link to our, what was it, 10 series? GTX 10 series, I think. <laughs> I so I this one was really nice as well, indeed. So this is like a lightning. throwback to, yeah. uh, this I think is based on the pretty much the original, original yeah. um, like the first release MSI Afterburner uh, skin, but then reworked for the uh, 10th uh, anniversary Lightning release, which was a couple of years ago. But yeah, yeah there's a lot of different skins in there. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's a really nice one. It's a more a bit of a steam, uh, well, not steampunk, but a, yeah, well, maybe it is steampunk. Yeah, or it actually is called steampunk. There you go. Um, and uh, what about uh, the completely at the bottom, that Windows 11? Because I think those are the ones that were added uh, most recently, right? Ooh, yeah, that's very uh, clean. Looks, wow. Yeah. yeah, you can't move it uh, when you have no, the, no, this window so open, open, indeed. Yeah. Um, OK, yeah, that's really clean. All right. But at least, as you can see there, I mean, there's a hell of a lot you can choose. Um, uh, can you choose the the Ampere one? I think there was an Nvidia. Uh, was it? Yeah, that one. That one. Yeah. So that one is, is really. It's as you can see. It's quite funny. It's shaped like the uh, founder's edition from Nvidia, uh, which is also kind of a, a nice idea. It's a nice wink to that design. So what? What's the original one? Is that the side? I'm not. One? I don't think it's in there. I think the uh, like the original original one. I don't think is in there. The default. I forgot which one was default. When, uh, when we started this one. It depends on when when you mean it was default. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Because I mean that that default. I, I think it's uh, you would say where it starts at the very top where it says default. You know you have default afterburner v2, but that's already v2. Yeah. Skin. So at the very top you have that uh, default v2 skin. You ha also have the big edition. Can you maybe show that difference as well? So there's a. There's the big edition, so as you can see, everything is a bit bulky. And then there's the this is the normal one, and I guess that big edition really came into uh, in, into its own, or was meant for if you're working on, at 4K high resolution, um, you know that it things are easier to read. Uh, but I think that the thing that's oh, closest yeah, to okay. how it looks like oh this is yeah okay this, this is now this the default. I was looking okay, for that's going back okay. to the that's regular one. Meant. All right, yeah. So th these are all the settings. Uh, Mystic pages. afterburner skin. So keep that yeah, in mind. Yeah. <laughs> they, they should just print default behind yeah. it. Then. <laughs> At least I can find it. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, you can press the, the monitoring page, uh, but that only shows up when you're in the desktop, or at least 
Um, yes. When there's a Maybe on a second, on if you have multiple monitors, you could put it on a second monitor. That's what I've done in the past. Yeah, yeah. that works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, during a full screen uh, game or 3D application, you wouldn't see it. So, no. um, uh, at least not with one monitor. Um, so, if you want to monitor, for example, the uh, GPU temperature, uh, you can just uh, press the show in on screen display and then you can say I, I just want to have it in text or graph or text and graph uh, and so and so you can build your own uh, overlay and you can also do that on the fly so while you're in a 3d application so this one can run in a window so that's easier to modify yeah and then well, we still have to press apply I guess and the should be an show overlay the... somewhere is I'm not sure maybe it's it's really tiny somewhere i don't know is it tiny i'm not sure oh top left it should be yeah but there's already text there so that's probably what makes it really hard to read maybe uh, put it on the bottom mm -hmm. this is usually why or I... maybe i'm in the settings and then it just takes a while uh, i don't know i usually uh, have uh, configure a, a toggle key because indeed, what I notice is it, it it doesn't always show up right away. Yeah, yeah. I think so. That's why usually, if I then toggle it once or twice, it will suddenly start popping up. Yeah, I was hoping I didn't have to do that because <laughs> then uh, I might have different hotkeys or the same hotkeys doing the same thing. Oh, okay. But uh, hang on. There we go. Yeah. Um, toggle. I I just use toggle because it's a, that's just like that. Yeah. Control Shift and T. Maybe it's not detecting it yet. Yeah, it could be. Wait, wait. Let's close it and yeah. reopen it. Okay. After burner, here we go. So I mean, it's yeah. It doesn't always work right away. Let's say so. It sometimes takes a little bit of tinkering. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can. So deep GPU temperature indeed. Oh, now you've got two open, two instances of uh, combustor. Ah, okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah doesn't matter. What basically always and what works most of the time is the frame rate. Yeah, it's a bit more at the bottom indeed. But here you can see, I mean, there's a long list of uh, features. By the way, you can see whichever one has a check mark in, in front of it. That means that in the, in the uh, hardware monitor, which was the little you know, monitor icon on the left in uh, uh, Afterburner, uh, that is being displayed. So as you can see, there are a couple of things, or actually quite a lot of things, that are not even checked right now, which means that it's not even showing. So it could even show more information. Um, so yeah. It's always uh, nice to just go through those settings and see if you have any information that you would like to display uh, that isn't currently displayed. Is it is it showing the full window? Because maybe I feel like maybe there's a bit missing at the bottom or something. Oh, that's the full screen. Eh? Yeah. See if that works. Maybe that's why it's kind yeah, of outside possible. of the frame. Yeah, because the whole thing about GPU... Yeah, hey, there you go. See, it oh, was yeah, showing it's up probably. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. So it was just hiding that part. There you go. Yeah. My mistake, sorry. No, that's okay, but I mean, yeah. But it, it normally can also we maybe works. do a, a smaller resolution because then you have uh, it's not oh, because oh. now it's almost like full screen. Um, uh, let's do it on top left, but slightly lower. Usually, yeah. I, I just pick two hundred pixels, pixels yeah. and then. So that's be just to be clear, uh, guys. That's how you uh, indeed provide an offset, so you can actually. Yeah. Say just I want it. it if you want it in the middle of your screen, that's possible, yeah. right? You can totally uh, do that. Uh, also, there's a slider here, yeah. and display zoom, and you make it bigger. Yes, so it does go in steps. By the way, the slider seems like it's very smooth, but uh, it does seem to go yeah, in, in like it has different steps. notches. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I think this is quite readable, right? Right. Should be. Yeah. I always double click in it. <laughs> Some programs need a double click and some only need a single click. Double tap. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ses uh, settings there indeed. Um, so you can see, you know, GPU temperature, uh, you know, things like what I usually do is temperature, fan speed, uh, GPU usage. Uh, so it shows you a percentage of how much of the um, GPU is actually being utilized, let's say. 
Um, uh, memory usage is quite useful these days as well. Uh, things like frame rate indeed really tells you um, how much, how many FPS you're currently getting in a game. Um, uh, frame time is quite useful because if there are big variations like spikes or dips in the frame rate, yeah. uh, it will show an, as a frame time uh, anomaly as well. So you will see a big yeah. change. And that's the thing that you really perceive as like a stutter or, you know, yeah. a big changes in even if, for example, if you're going uh, between, I don't know, 500 and 200 FPS, if there's a sudden change, it, it seems you would think, well, that's really high FPS, so I won't notice. No, you will, um, because of the you know there's a big difference there, a big uh, sudden difference. So the, the the frame times are shown as a graph. Yes. And as uh, as text as well. So if there's a big spike, then you will probably see uh, the animation also stutter a little yep. bit. So usually this is a uh, yeah. This tool basic, usually is also yeah. very useful. I, I always um, advise this to people who, for example, want to monitor uh, or, or kind of troubleshoot issues on their PC. When they have the feeling that, for example, they're not getting the right performance or something is bottlenecking their system, but they can't quite figure out what it is, um, then I always tell them, well, you know, this is one of the things you can use during the game to check out uh, is, is your uh, system utilizing your resources or is one of your resources being the limiting factor? Is, uh, you know, for example, is your uh, GPU or your CPU becoming too hot? Is it throttling? Um, is it uh, downclocking? Is it, um, in some cases, you could, I've, I've actually seen people uh, find out this way that uh, the game was using their integrated GPU on their uh, CPU instead of their dedicated graphics card. Um, which explained why they were getting very low FPS in, in Fortnite, for example. Um, so this, this is a really uh, useful tool to really uh, see how your system is doing uh, during and how it's performing, uh, each of it, its components, let's say, uh, during gaming or whatever operation you're doing. So it really allows you to keep an eye on it during, uh, on one screen uh, during what, whatever you're doing during the game. And it can help you to identify potential bottlenecks or, or things that are limiting factors. So you have some text options you yep. know, to change the color and also the, the maybe the size is more related to the zoom level. Um, and the graph limit, so you can set a, a, a minimum and a maximum. And you can also change the name of the graph. So yep. this one's called frame time, so you could name it whatever you want. Yep. Uh, and you can also uh, change the color of the graph a little bit. Uh, but that's about it, what you can do with the graphs and the text uh, overlay in uh, Afterburner. So if you want to uh, have it more grouped together or uh, um, um, in a different order or uh, more graphs or more uh, animations inside, you yep. will need to go to the overlay editor of Riva Tuner Statistics Server. So th this is the yeah. basics what you can do with the afterburner. Yeah. And, and as you can see on the left there, I mean, there are different colors. So GPU memory, the text there is like green and there the CPU is in blue and then OGL is a different color and, and the text is a different color. That it will do by itself, uh, but it's all yeah. defined. So if you click on, uh, I believe it's the, the dot, dot, dot near text, isn't it? Uh, at the at the top there? Uh, yeah, I think yes. you can, yeah. So here you can see at the top there are a couple of colors uh, um, defined, let's say, um, and it's really, it will just, Pick the first color for the first thing that you know you, you choose, and then the second color in that way. Uh, I usually in my live streams, what I do is I usually pick orange because it, it usually contrasts quite well with <laughs> with everything, um, and it also has like a dark edge around the text and, and all the symbols, which you can enable or remove. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of things that you can customize there already. Uh, but it doesn't really change the look of it. It just changes, you know, things like yeah. th the size of the text, the color, uh, and a little bit, the, for example, if you want it to be more or less contrasting. Um, but it, it doesn't introduce visuals, let's say, or um, uh, it doesn't change uh, how, how things are presented um, in terms of, yeah, the, 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 the layout. But if you just want to have basic troubleshooting yeah. and you can already use this very good. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. If 
very useful. This is a quick and easy way of getting uh, getting yeah. that overview indeed. Okay. Um, before we go to the actual editor, maybe it's yeah. a nice uh, nice moment to do a giveaway. Okay. Um, so let's switch to the main view first. So yeah, if you haven't already, you can uh, participate by uh, going to amazon.com slash two slash insider. There's a button there. Uh, or alternatively, in the YouTube and Twitch chats, uh, every five minutes, our uh, Stream Elements bot is sharing the link uh, to the giveaway. Uh, which is a Gleam link, and there you can go and uh, participate. The more actions you perform there, the more points you have in your tally. If you're a regular viewer, you uh, participate in the uh, giveaways regularly as well. You'll have bonus points to uh, throw in there, which you can do every single live stream. They don't expire, uh, and they just keep building up, basically. And it just adds to your chances of winning. So that's always nice. Um, yeah, and as mentioned, we will give away multiple codes during this live stream. Uh, let's start with the first one right now. Uh, and it's a completely random draw in the in the background, and our first winner is okay. Let's see. It's always a challenge, uh, at least for some names. Uh, Citro R K Y Citro Erky Citorky 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 <laughs> Citorky Citorky. Yeah, anyway. Congratulations, yeah. Torki. We, we're going to get a, a Steam wallet code uh, sent out to you as soon as possible after the live stream. And uh, yeah, hope you uh, do something nice with it. Uh, there are more more um, Steam wallet keys to be won during this live stream, so make sure you uh, yeah you participate. You've put your points in there, and uh, yeah, going forward you uh, and of course the big giveaway during this live stream is of course the free Afterburner OSD skin. From that guy that you're getting from from him. <laughs> I mean, I credit where credit's due. You did all the work, um, so you know we're, we're just uh, we're just playing Santa Claus with it. We're we're uh, allowed to give it to them, but thank you for uh, for doing that. Yeah, we, we get the questions a lot, so yeah, yeah. It, it, it's better to to have everybody have the same thing, right? Yes. So. Yeah, I mean it's nice, and we wanted to make yeah. it available, indeed. So uh, all right. So. Uh, I disabled all the OSD stuff in Afterburner because if you do both Afterburner OSD and Riva Tuner statistic server overlay, custom overlay, then uh, it will just layer on top of each other. So we, we've both seen that. will show. <laughs> yeah, That's we've actually had problems where during my live streams yeah. I use I prefer that the, you know the basic overview and yeah. uh, and then it, the, the systems get the, we get from you guys one. usually have that yeah. the fancy overview uh, yeah. uh, pre-installed. And yeah, it I, was an old ins installation that yeah. I used in the live stream, and you used it later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I had to go and figure out how I could actually remove yeah, the yeah. fancy overlay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because yeah, it didn't show yeah. the thing that I wanted it to show. Uh, so yeah, anyway. So um, for, for the overlay to work, the, the, the one uh, that we uh, made for this live stream, yes. uh, you don't even need the afterburner. No. So basically, all you need is uh, Love. Re Riva Wait, Tuner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if you uh, click on Riva Tuner, it just um, automatically goes to the sys tray. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't show the interface uh, normally. Yeah. Um, um, th there's some stuff uh, here uh, for some settings, but the, mo the main setup is uh, when you press setup and go to plugins. And there you have two options. Um, both can be used, and both are very useful. Um, at least I use it all the time, and also in combination of each other. So first, we'll show the overlay editor. And that's that's the main yeah. thing you need for the for you the skin. You need to make sure right? the, the, the the little check mark is uh, yeah lit up. It, yeah, it was unchecked before, yeah. so you have so to it, check it yeah, manually. Like this, it's off, so yeah. it's only selected but not enabled. And so um, like this, it's Selected and enabled, and if you double click it, or it should pop up. Yeah, hey. and here you get the canvas of uh, overlay. Um, default, it will open a blank one, and so you can create your own. And there are also some stuff uh, or overlays that are already provided uh, by the the programmer. And mine was based on the sample one. Um, um, a slightly older version of it, but uh, the yeah you, the you basics can see some are lightness. still there. Sorry, you can see a little bit of lightness here, indeed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, I I thought th there were some 
I, I first used this one and modified mm -hmm. it slightly. Um, and then uh, I, I just used the parts that I liked. So I, I really liked the fan uh, <laughs> thing, yeah. uh, animation, the fan animation. Big so fan I, of the fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of the fan, yeah, <laughs> fan animation. So uh, uh, also, if you want to know how that's done exactly, uh, there are some videos on uh, the programmers uh, yep. YouTube. So that's Alexei Nikolaychuk, yeah. if I pronounce it correctly. probably butchered the name, but yeah. Yeah, sorry uh, if I mispronounce the name. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of uh, videos here. Um, some are quite dated, but uh, most of the overlay editor parts or the hypertext editor, that's about the overlay. So um, yeah. also when you download Riva Tuner uh, from the Guru 3D website, uh, the links are also here, and this is one of the YouTube uh, videos, and these are the other three uh, explaining how you can uh, animate stuff and also um, modify the graphs and also combine stuff. And uh, hopefully I can also give you some tools uh, uh, with this video uh, to make your own. Yeah. Um, also, like to mention is the uh, the RTSS Overlay Editor Mega Thread in the Guru 3D forum. Um, because there's a, yeah, there's a lot of people. Uh, a community. Yeah, a yeah. community that, that's uh, uh, doing their own overlays and, and yeah. customizing and stuff like that. So very uh, useful information there as yeah. well. N not all of them um, are quite willing to, to you know, readily show their overlays with you, mind you, because yeah. I mean, they, they've you can obviously download, put a lot of time and effort yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's understandable to a degree, uh, but yeah, we, we did, the, you know, that's also one of the reasons why we decided, okay, well, we actually do want uh, our um, overlay to be available to you guys because, I mean, for us, it's it's a nice little gesture, I guess, that we can share this with you. Uh, and if you like how it looks and you just want to have that uh, look in, in, uh, in your games, now you, you have the ability to do it. Yeah. Can you can you show the other layouts, by yeah, the way? Course, the other, yeah, of um, uh, the, the one uh, mini, uh, I'm not sure. It actually, it's not bad at I either. Yeah, it's, it's very quite. Yeah, yeah, very basic, but very uh, exactly. Yeah, informative. So yeah. very good. Yeah. And classic. I'm not sure about that one. Ooh, that's really basic as well. Yeah. You can see that there's a little bit less layout going on there still, and it's a bit. Yeah, like maybe this is an older one. I'm not sure. Probably. And benchmark is later, but yeah, this yeah. only works with the FPS. Bench. It's yeah. really logging and, and uh, focused there, there on will FPS. Be some, and, oh, sorry, um, oh. I moved the layer. Uh, oh. There will be some information here when when you, you uh, enable the benchmark and stop the benchmark, then it will show you some summary of the uh, yeah the, the the average FPS, the maximum FPS, and the uh, zero point one percent lows and the one percent lows, something like that. Uh, that is also incorporated into the um, uh, the layout that I shared. But I mean, from those basic layouts that are there already, uh, indeed, the uh, what is it? The um, the one that you were using uh, as a basis. That mm -hmm. one was uh, the most, let's say, graphically um, intensive. Yeah. Yeah, or, or advanced, yeah. or whatever. You know, the, the, it was. The, the, in one, terms yeah. of presentation, that one was the mo well. Let's just say the fanciest, because you have the fanciest. It, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's not just. I mean, it, it employs graphs. It employs the, yeah. the, the text. It has a bit more of formatting going on. Uh, but you even have an Intel logo there, because it, it. I guess it detects if you have an Intel or an AMD CPU in there. It has the fan uh, um, icon and actually an animation there as well. I do believe. Um, yeah. If the fan starts spinning, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. And there's even like those little round, uh, gr uh, yeah. How do you want to say? Is it a graph? I'm not sure what to call it. Let um, me start up the compass there again. Yeah, then. but the usage. Um, oh, yeah. There, there you go. go. So, so actually, the fan should start spinning in a in a moment. Yeah, it's it's a graphics card, so it takes a while. It needs to get uh, to a, a suitable temperature. Actually, the fans are spinning, but oh, oh there, yeah, we there we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sensor's a bit slow, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But so as you can see, so now there's actually a bit of an animation of the fan spinning. Yeah. I'm not sure. Does it speed up if the fan speed gets higher? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So uh, you can even control the rate of the. <laughs> it's a calculation, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a very nice explanation uh, video from uh, the, the the programmer. Um, 
but it, it's it's very nerdy it's very technical yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's very interesting how he did it and uh, at least I, I think it's interesting um, the, the one thing I didn't like about uh, this one is for me it's spinning backwards yeah normally the fans yeah. need the, 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 like even, the, yeah, the blades his, will be yeah. scooping air so they need to exactly yeah. yeah so in his video he even showed me <laughs> how to reverse that or in my case for, for me is then the normal way yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but I, I didn't watch that part so instead of <laughs> doing the simple way by um, uh, um, modifying the calculation I, <laughs> backwards I just, no I, I, I rearranged the 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 the, uh, the different uh, slides or sprites yeah so that the pictures inside I just rearranged with a with a picture editor <laughs> so I did it <laughs> old-fashioned <laughs> stupid way <laughs> but it worked so, hacker yeah. man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so if i watched the video just yep. two minutes longer yeah. i would have had a much easier job <laughs> <laughs> but hey it works yeah I, I, I'm also a, a tweaker, a tinker, yeah, yeah, so exactly. uh, yeah, I a like bit, to play around with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What I really liked about this one, uh, 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 there's some stuff I like and some stuff I don't like. Um, I, I thought it's too much color, so yeah. not for me. Um, what I really like is that it's almost transparent as well, so th that's yeah. pretty good. That that means it's it less intrusive, so yeah. yeah you, you, it's but not it's a bit it's anything. a bit wide so <laughs> i try to make it a little bit uh, narrow so, so it doesn't occupy that much uh, screen space um, i also experimented with a horizontal one which was not not great because yeah uh, we tend to have more uh, uh, space in the uh, in a wide screen than we have in the vertical space so yeah. uh, we have extra space in the uh, in the horizontal uh, region. Yeah. So that's where my uh, journey began and modified the whole thing. Uh, so how to get the... the <coughs> yes. So indeed, say you, you've downloaded the file, the file. that we, yeah. that we linked to. That now. Um, yeah. So now this one is selected and yep. um, hang on. Uh, go to the desktop. I, Oh yeah. Okay. So there's a zip file here. Yeah. That's the one that's also uh, that downloadable we're from the OneDrive yes. that uh, is in the description of YouTube, and uh, basically copy this one, for example, to the desktop. At least the OVX file is the one you need to open. Yeah. Uh, so what do you, you need do? to keep because you, you put it on the desktop for now. I can imagine you don't want yeah, to keep it there. So can you delete it afterwards, or yeah, do you, you need to keep it, it somewhere? Yeah. yeah. Um, before you needed to, like the the OVL file and the picture file, and you needed to drop it into the program files x86 Riva tuner yeah. uh, um, plugins client overlay <laughs> uh, folder. That's still possible, yeah. but the OVX file is easier. Uh, you can just say import, then go to the directory where you save the OVX file, and just say open. There you go. There you go. That's all you need. Easy as that. So this is the modified version I use. Um, Notice the it, fan is spinning the right way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what well I done. also added is the RPM uh, because I think the RPM says more than the percentage. Uh, uh, also, the percentage uh, differs per uh, yeah. graphics card. So yeah. one fan uh, can go, yeah. I don't know, twenty-five hundred RPM, and the other can can only go half that. I mean, I'm not sure. Exactly. Yeah, and. and uh, the, depends on what card you have and how yeah. many fans you have you you could even uh, build more fans into an overlay um, depending on how many uh, fan sensors you have yeah. so with what i normally do is i put the cpu fan here and i also want to show you how it's done but first let me uh, show you what's inside this one okay. so how the overlay works or is built up is it needs sensor data right so at the moment it's using only sensor data from uh, Riva, Tuner. Riva Tuner statistics server right. or how it's called internal hull hardware extraction layer I believe 
but you have different sources. So if you have AIDA64 in the background, it can also use the sensors from that, or uh, I prefer info most of the time because that's the one we use all the time for uh, logging uh, sensor data to file. Uh, and you can also use the sensor uh, from MSI Afterburner. Even Windows, I see. So yeah, does that, this... that one is, is uh, the oh. one I was not successful with oh. yet. <laughs> okay, so okay. Uh, yes, it's there, but okay. uh, I try to uh, add like uh, how many uh, bytes uh, they were sent over the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethernet. And, uh, and it didn't work. <laughs> okay. Connectivity. Uh, so, so, not sure if other sensors do work, but that one didn't. So, it detects those programs. Um, yeah. So, if they're installed. So, you don't, I mean, no, in yeah, the end. No, you have to be active. Yeah, so, okay, but not, not in the uh, in, in the current state, right? As in, in your. No, um, you can just uh, in minimize your overlay it. editor. Yeah. You don't even have to have them running in the background yet. Even if you just have them installed, it, they will show up as like sources for data. Yeah, um, but yeah, of but course, you when you still when need you to run import it, it. so yeah. um, if, for example, you want maybe the the, the second fan uh, speed, mm. you also need to enable that one, and then it will pop up here. Yeah. So now it's accessible to be used inside your overlay. Yeah. So if I don't want this one uh, from uh, fan, uh, fan 1, you can make this fan 2 if you want. Mm. So, or you can add another one. Well, let's do that. Just so add a, a layer. Normal layer is uh, in orange, but you can change the color as well. <coughs> so let's say I want to add um, Um, the, the the second fan, mm. but I don't want to just have, say, fan. So we want to see uh, the actual value. Then you need to have the. And now it's in orange, but you can yeah. also change that. <coughs> custom say, text okay, color. There custom you go, color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can even give it a background. I see. Yeah. And uh, there's also. Ah, okay, now it's quite big, so you can do some scaling as well. Okay, so it's in percentages. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's say <laughs> I want them sh both shown here. That's and a bit of a. You can also say I want to have it in the middle. Ah, okay. So There's a bit of a snapping mechanic there as well. I see. Yeah. Th there's. Uh, yeah. Small squares, mm. or it's not square. It's a rectangle, but mm. uh, areas. Let's say. Yeah, <laughs> not sure how this was designed or uh, thought to be working, but that this is how you can just add stuff. Yeah. Of course, you can also add a graph and, and stuff. Um, I also did it here. Um, the graphs you, you see here are uh, auto scaling. So. Uh, th this overlay was meant so it can be used on, on multiple uh, configurations, uh, so different CPUs, different GPUs, uh, graphics cards with different power limits, with different uh, uh, clock frequencies and stuff like that. Um, normally I don't touch this because this works very well because it's a graph between 0 and 100 uh, milliseconds. So if, um, uh, if you have spikes of 100 milliseconds or bigger, <laughs> then you will already drop below the, the 10 FPS range. And you probably see on the screen that it's stuttering. You, you go off the scales, literally. <laughs> yeah, if you go off the scales, then also the the, the, the yeah the, the, the 3D part will yeah. not be very fluent yeah. anymore. Yeah. So uh, th this works very well, and you don't need to scale it by different configuration. But for example, this one is uh, a graph. That's the G stands for, and and the graph setting. Let me try and put it side by side is uh, auto scale, but what I normally do with my own um, uh, overlay is I check how fast uh, this graphics card maximum clocks can do, and then I set between 0 and 3000, for example, then I can um, nicely see, and we should be able to see it change if I press apply. And then now it shows you it's 2800 on a scale from 0 to 3000. So it's, now it's not auto scaling anymore because auto scaling means 
Um, if there's only, in this graph, there's only like uh, 2700 to 2800, then it will just show you 2700 on the bottom and 2800 in the top. Which does mean that you get a bit more detailed view of, you know, yeah, little yeah. little micro dips and, and rises. Yeah, exactly. But it, it might yeah. be confusing. So yeah, uh, it doesn't show you the total scale. So it really depends. Yeah. I mean, th but this is great. So you can really choose. Like, do you want yeah. to see the, the full scale? Because now what you will see also is when it uh, when you, if you go back to uh, the uh, the desktop, for example, or you close the application, it will drop all the way to yeah. uh, I don't mm -hmm. know, it should drop to 400 to or something or something. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So, um, and there you can see, really see. Yeah. I mean, uh, auto scaling, I guess, would do the same thing uh, to a degree because it would it would have to because it would see that the the value would drop so far. Um, yeah. Then it will look the same until this disappears. So yes. this moves out of the way. Yeah. And, uh, and then it will zoom time, in again. Let's say. Then it will zoom in on yeah. the two hundred and ten megahertz yeah. because that yeah. will be like a flat line anyway. Yeah. And so, so if you prefer that, then auto scaling might be yeah. an option that you want to use. Uh, but it need, uh, what what we usually use is like a set um, a set graph value, let's say, yeah. so because the, we, yeah, we know what the uh, what the hardware is capable of, so we know exactly uh, the yeah. total scale. So uh, you could just turn off the auto scale, but as you can see here, uh, uh, this is the GPU power. And I've set it to 500. Well, for a 4070, that's that's quite yes, big. that's quite high. Yeah. Um, so I would say 350 would be more than yeah, 350. <laughs> so uh, something like that. You you, you can always uh, change yeah. it. And you can play with it. I, if you put a, actually, it's quite big still. So yeah. maybe 300 would be better. Anyway, you can just tinker with this, and yeah. but uh, this also makes it kind of hard for for MSI Center to implement this and make it universal for everyone yeah. or for every configuration. Yeah. So um, uh, that's why the, the afterburner part is more for uh, the enthusiast user who wants to play around with this kind of stuff. Yeah, and sp this spend overlay time editor this. is even one step further, right? Yeah. 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 So MSI Center is more for the people who, who just want to set and forget and, yeah. and don't want to know probably, all the details. I yeah. mean, doesn't MSI Center use something like the auto scale functionality? Because then, in, indeed, it's like a well, one size actually, fits all approach. Actually, it doesn't use this overlay. So it, it uses a yeah, of course. Or yeah. It, it it offers some kind of game bar overlay, but it's uh, it doesn't offer any anywhere near this kind of detail. No, no, indeed. So it's very basic. Yeah. But I mean, it works indeed. For more, I mean, for a basic overview, and that's exactly what it's meant to do. Um, and here, it's indeed a bit more uh, advanced, let's say. So, if you really know what you're looking for and what you want to be looking at, uh, here you really have the possibility to define that uh, to exactly the degree that you that you want it. Yeah. And that's the big benefit, indeed, of um, uh, Riva Tuner Statistics Server in this case. So, uh, I'm already modifying this. Uh, free version to to my own liking uh, by uh, changing the auto uh, scaling part. Um, for example, for this 13600K, I don't know by heart th uh, what what the maximum frequency is. So I just open HW Info, and in light loads, it will just boost to a very high frequency. In this case, uh, about 5100 megahertz. Yeah. So if I set this one to uh, at the moment is uh, at six, uh, but I don't believe it will go over 5400, so I'm pretty safe with this value. <coughs> yeah. Did it auto? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it did. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but okay. I mean, you Sorry. were quite yeah. close to the original value, yeah. so it, it, yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. You don't see that much no. of a difference at the no. moment. And with the uh, power, uh, I know that the CPU power of this one is roughly uh, up to. 180 to 200 watts, so let's oh, say 200. 400 is a bit over the top. Yeah, yeah two, 400 <laughs> is for a different CPU. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be a 13900 KS, then yes, yeah. if you have very beefy cooling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so then the graphs are scaled yeah. for this system. So if you move this over, uh, overlay to another system, you need to edit it a little bit again. So 
that's how I do it uh, yeah. with the live streams. Yeah, you guys need to because you, you do a lot of you know different builds. You have a lot of different test benches, test configurations. So yeah, uh, for each one, you will kind of reconfigure it quickly to um, yeah. yeah to what you need. Well, the the fancy part about this one, the graphs are quite useful because you see the dips when yeah. when when you uh, when you troubleshooting, uh, you want to see when it's happening or yeah. what is happening. Yeah. So. Um, Usually the temperature will go up and the clocks will uh, will dip, yes. and then you will know. Okay, it's the CPU that's getting too hot, or the GPU is getting too hot, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then you can check the the fan speeds and stuff. Yeah. At the moment, the fan speed of the CPU is not listed. Uh, we're going to add that later. Yeah. Or a very uh, uh, a common theme these days, for example, if you have an older graphics card with uh, I don't know less than uh, 12 gigs or 10 gigs of uh, VRAM. Yeah, uh, you yeah, can also. Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. You, yeah. you can add uh, things like the, the VRAM usage, so you can actually see yeah. when it's hitting that limit, and that that could, if that coincides with your stuttering, for example, yeah, then I, you I, know, yeah. okay, that's very likely to be the cause. Yeah, we we can add that quite easily. Uh, yeah. This should be in the uh, River Tuner. This is RAM, though. This is not that's the, the, the motherboard. Yeah. yeah, the CPU RAM. Let's say. Yeah, the graphics card. Memory usage per process. Or you can even see indeed per process, so it can actually tell you what the game, yeah. for example, is used. But it's probably will become a big list or something. Not yeah, sure. you can do it in percentage, but I, I prefer to have the, the actual real thing. value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we we just added nice. the GPU one memory usage in megabytes. I'm not sure, however, if it uh, also tells you like. Uh, the how much it's using of what's available, or if it just s tells you there what, is what a it's using. There's a possibility to do that as well. Yeah, I believe so, indeed. That it, it like shows you like I don't know. Uh, hang on, hang on. Of the total think, value. Yeah, maybe uh, we can do that. Oh, you want to combine? <laughs> uh, yeah, you should be able to combine it as well. Mm. But it's not a. Yeah, you, maybe you need to add it then first to that list, right? The, like the total value, or actually maybe it's a like a static value because it should it's be. It's a static value. It's a static yeah. number, right? So maybe. But anyway, like uh, you said, I've it, seen it, that before. Yeah. But okay, I'm not sure at the moment. No. I'm I can just type it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> something like 12 gigabytes, right? Uh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you need to then do uh, uh, I don't know how many zeros after the 12? Yeah. So we have to Maybe. do 12 times 1,024, 1,024, 1, uh, yeah. Well, like yeah. <laughs> How many megabytes? <laughs> megabytes. Or megabytes, then only 12 times 1,024. Is it, it 12,000 then, or what was it supposed to be? But you can also do calculations, I believe. Um, hmm. um, hang on. So it's almost like okay. Excel in that regard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you can. No, you have to make a new. Data source. I believe. Oh, okay. So if you do add, yeah, but then you can just use the percentage one, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah the percentage also, it, will it, also there tell is you. stuff possible to. Anyway, to, if, if yeah. you if if your goal is to see, um, um, you know, if it's bottlenecking you, if it's hitting the limit, then percentage should be fine because it tells you. I mean, yeah. if it's hitting one hundred percent or very near to that, then that probably is could be a, a cause of stuttering. Um, and if you want to see the actual value, then you also have to know how much memory is in the card. You know, So if, if you don't know that, then probably the percentage is better. It will tell you as well. Because you can do, how did I do it before? I just used one that didn't make sense. <laughs> so So you need to have this one. Mm. Can I just use the name? Copy. Then I think you need to use the parentheses. Uh, I 
see if that works. Uh, it only has one decimal. <laughs> oh. mm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we're getting a bit sidetracked, so maybe. Uh... Yeah, I, this is even more advanced if you yes. want to do it. But yeah. yeah. But I mean, this yeah. shows you, right? I mean, there's a lot possible. You can possible, do calculations and stuff. But you need to yeah. have a bit of time yeah. to 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 think about it. L maybe even in those forums, uh, you know, there's so, so yeah, probably yeah, some yeah. documentation yeah. that can Definitely, help you out. Yeah. So yeah. You can format the the. Uh, 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 how much digit, digits you want and stuff like that, but yep. I, I don't know those by heart. I need to look them up also. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you, you can do stuff uh, with this uh, quite easily. Yes. So th th there's a lot of solutions here if you're willing to spend the time uh, yeah. uh, to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's go into the animations first. Um, so this is layered on top of each other. So basically, this is the uh, CPU usage. So that is just a percentage, it's just text. And this one is um, is what they call an AI or a graph or uh, an animation, actually. Um, what it does is, um, uh, let me first show you where does it get its... Uh, okay, it doesn't show that one. Okay, any sorry. Uh, in the layer, it calls a, a, a picture, a PNG, a portable network graphics file, and there it is. Uh, I think it's. No, should be here somewhere. Anyway, if I click this. Uh, three dots, then it will open the sprite or the uh, yeah the file that you, that is used. Yeah. And in this case, for this animation, it uses uh, sprite zero to ten. So basically, eleven uh, possibilities. So um, this is zero percent, of course. This is one hundred percent, and this is anything in between in steps of ten percent. That's basically how uh, this animation works. You can even uh, show which one is is there. So yeah. it's a. Uh, you go through it. You yeah. can go through it. Um, if you misconfigure, then the whole thing doesn't work, of <laughs> course. So uh, there's an X, a Y. So that's the position. Then you also need to define how big it is, uh, how many sprites in total, uh, a sprite number per line, and uh, and so on and so on. So this one is just. Uh, having different slides, if you will, in an animation. If, uh, if you're if you're quite young, you probably don't know what sprites are. But this is how it used to be how how games were animated, right? They were just yeah different. It, it's like stop motion, I guess. You can compare it, is, it to yeah, that. It is, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this basically, is a just a you know, basic one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This but was the uh, the illusion of of movement in the past. But th this is how they they created this kind of. Uh, uh, Graph. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's very efficient because that means, like, by doing it this way, it, these are quite um, small uh, graphics yeah. uh, files, let's say. So that's also w one of the reasons why it's it's very uh, small as a package, very small on your hard drive. Um, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. You can also change the color and stuff. So yeah. uh, it's, it's white in the basics, but. Um, if you want it red or different color. Yeah. Now, now it's close to zero so only if it's above five then it will start to, f uh, yeah. to show the first bar so it should uh, run something right <laughs> if you run so yeah that, that's going to text the cpu oh, oh there, there we go, go. A little bit already. see yeah. red yeah. there you so go. it should be uh, up to 100 in, uh, yeah. in a second there yeah. we go. so this is how it looks Now it should drop. Yeah. 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 But uh, my my one of my first uh, modifications used white and red, so that was the colors that we used for for gaming, of course. Uh, um, then I I, I captured. Uh, uh, if you make screenshots, then the red works perfectly fine. But if you um, stream it or record it with a, a video encoder, then red is not ideal because red will. Um, have some artifacts when, when yeah. compressed uh, in a video codecs. So 
I changed it back to, um, to everything uh, in grayscale. And that made it also uh, more easy on the eye. So it's yeah. also less in your face and yeah. uh, it's just like a transparent overlay yeah. somewhat. It's quite subtle, it's not too screamy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's, uh, and that worked really well. So I, I just chose it by accident and it worked out quite well. So um, also you can see this one is narrower. Yeah, it's, uh, it oc occupies less screen space than the original one. Yeah. Um, it has more height, but less width. <coughs> so this is the first animation. Of course, uh, I'm a fan of the fan animation, so I'm going to show you that one next. Uh, basically, it works the same way. So it has different kind of what they call sprites or uh, parts of the picture. And here you can see all the fan uh, parts. Yeah. So if you just uh, put them in order, then it will just show you a stop motion animation of the fan. And uh, uh, <coughs> so it has uh, nine, uh, zero to eight, so nine uh, total uh, parts. And you can also go through it like this. So yeah. this is the stop motion part. As you can see, it's very. Um, subtle indeed. It's each uh, change of the position of the fan is very subtle, but that's how you get like a, you know it, it looks yeah. like a very fluent animation. If yeah. you've ever been like I don't know, I think Nine Gag has a has a habit of this as well. The you get like um, uh, animated gifs or something of you know, and there's an animation like I don't know of a bus or, or a truck uh, nearing a, a big block of uh, um, cement, you know, that it's it's gonna hit, and then it just it switches to another angle of the same, t and it just keeps heading towards it, and then it switches to another angle again, uh, but they just keep repeating it basically, so they keep looping the animation. It, that's kind of what this is doing as well, and it never actually, I mean, it it, it you know, you, you're kind of looking at it like, oh, is it gonna hit? Is it gonna hit? Is it gonna hit? It never does. It just keeps looping the same angles and animations over and over again. And that's pretty much what this thing does as well. And it gives the idea of a continuous you know, spinning of the fan, but yeah. only actually it, it shows uh, a little actually, part of the fan. Th this animation, because uh, a fan is very symmetrical, so it, it basically only does a quarter of the motion. So it doesn't do a full loop. No. Only yeah. a quarter is enough to, to, to have the effect. So. That's yep. basically what it does. So, yeah. and you you well, trick your I, you trick your eyes, your mind basically yeah. into seeing a continuous fluid animation. Yeah. So, movement. what I thought uh, I do because the the uh, the the pictures shown on or the the, the teaser of this uh, live stream, <laughs> there was like a, a small dragon in inside this <laughs> middle part, like there is on, on our graphics card usually. So, I try to. M Modify the the, the, <laughs> the file and put the the the, the dragon uh, logo in. Yeah, so that it will spin with the. Uh, yeah, the, the problem was this only is like a quarter of yeah. the whole loop. So that I, doesn't work. Instead of nine, <laughs> I needed thirty six, and I didn't yeah. have enough time. Because yeah. <laughs> then you have to indeed you have to make the full yeah. three sixty. Otherwise, it's yeah, going to exactly. look weird. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it would just yeah. It breaks the illusion. <laughs> exactly, it breaks the illusion. Yeah. So I, I didn't do that on uh, on uh, yeah uh, <laughs> yesterday evening no well. uh, so the data source of this one is called fan top animation timer and uh, so there's also a bottom one the bottom usually I reserve for uh, the CPU fan we're gonna add that uh, in a second uh, so what is the animator then well that's the trick that is ex explained by uh, Alexei in his video. Um, with the data sources, you have one fan top animator, and that's also a calculation. So it mm. uses the GPU fan uh, tag, so the, the RPMs of the, the, the first GPU fan. At the moment, it's stopped, so um, basically zero. And uh, X is uh, a timer um, timer inside the, the, the Riva tuner. And this is just a number that I fine-tuned to see that uh, uh, the animation matches. Uh, so is it spinning close to, uh, for my feeling, yeah. close to the, the fans that be. I see? Yeah. And uh, uh, that's how you fine-tune it. Uh, and this is the uh, modulo uh, symbol. So 
divided by uh, 9 in this case, so this value will always be um, 1 to 8, uh, basically. Mm. So the 1 to 8 m means it uh, selects uh, sprite number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then goes back to eight, oh, 1 again. So this is how it loops. Mm. And uh, if this one uh, is higher, so the RPM is higher, then also it will spin faster. It will multiply. Uh, yeah. How it works exactly, you need to watch the video is, uh, from <laughs> Alexei. Uh, it's, it's quite yeah. complex. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's his his ingenuity. I would yeah. say it's his, his uh, logic applied yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, it's very yeah creative how 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 we designed it. Uh, yeah. yeah. But. I like it and it's working, so um, yeah. Yep. So I use it all the time. I mean, it's a common theme of why uh, Afterburner is so loved and, and widely used as well. Is um, it, it sometimes some parts of it can seem a bit complex and daunting, um, especially the more advanced features, uh, because it does offer a lot of uh, possibilities there. But the the bottom line there is it. Usually, it does just work as well. It does what it needs to do. It's very stable. It's yeah. very dependable, uh, and that's I think one of the main reasons why it it has you know slowly because again remember 2009 this was introduced uh, at least Afterburner itself, uh, but pretty much by being very dependable, being very stable, um, maybe not the sexiest, but you know definitely the most reliable and dependable. That's why I think so many people uh, in the end started using it and stuck to it. So if we want to add another fan, for example, the CPU fan instead of the GPU fan, <coughs> the easiest way to do it is just copy this layer <laughs> and then paste. Then you have two. Hey. So you don't have to reinvent the, the fan, whole thing again. The wheel. And um, the only thing you need now is some f uh, CPU fan RPM. In order to do that, you need to add a data source that is capable of showing fan RPM. So you can either choose AIDA or HWINFO in this case. Um, I use uh, HWINFO all the time, so I'm going to use that one. Uh, for example, I can choose to use the CPU fan or the pump fan, whatever we want. Uh, the pump fan is not changing that much, so let's use the CPU one. I think most people, is that quite common these days, Ruud, to have the, the pump fan? I remember when I set mine up, they said, well, it's usually best to just keep it on a, a static uh, speed, yeah, not actually, change it too much. It, it, it's static, but uh, sometimes the, the sensor data dips because ah, okay. it misses a, a mm. beat, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think a lot of people will... I, I will think that's the motherboard sensor not being 100%. Yeah. Also, yeah. if the, there's like lower speeds, then it will also drop to zero. So at the moment it's <laughs> doing almost nothing. So yeah, yeah. The, so the, the the CPU fan or the the radiator fans is yeah. I attach them to the CPU fan header of the motherboard. Yeah. So how do we get this one here? That's the question. Well, first you need to go into the settings, and I'm using the the, the free version of uh, HW Info now um, because um, it has what they call a shared memory support 12 hour limit. So if you have the free version, then uh, the, the shared memory support, that means it will share memory or share its sensors to, for example, Riva Tuna, like this. Um, but after 12 hours, it will stop and you need to re enable it again. If you have the paid version of HW Info, you, you don't have this limit, of course. So make sure this one is checked. So um, go into settings, then go into maiden settings, and then shared memory. Uh, for AIDA, this, uh, uh, the, almost the same setting applies. And when it when it's disabled, for example, do you have to only just tick that box and it yeah. works again? Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's not too bad. You don't have to yeah. reconfigure everything. And so now all the sensors of uh, HW Info are here. For example, I can show you what happens if I untick it, or if it gets unticked by itself, then it should disappear. 
or at, at least freeze. it doesn't update anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it probably just keeps the, the yeah. last known value or something. Yeah, probably. But if I, oh, sorry, if I re ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if no, I reopen it, it, it's not there. Yeah. So <clears throat> also, if you have defined uh, a sensor uh, from HW info and you forgot to, to, to start up the HW info file, it, it just doesn't show anything. So, uh, or it shows you the the, uh, the variable name maybe. Mm. So let's go to the, the the fan we need or the fan we want. So for example, I'm going to use the CPU fan because that one is not available in um, Riva Tuna or in Afterburner as a sensor. So let's use that one. So now it's defined. So we we should be able to use it um, in our. Uh, so let's rename it to CPU fan. That would make more sense, right? Yeah. I'm not sure which one I need to rename, so <laughs> just do both. Oh no, that doesn't work. <laughs> then we should leave this one alone, I guess. Yeah, now we're back. So uh, CPU fan is the name of the source, and we uh, need to attach that to uh, the fan bottom animation timer. So that's the one we're going to use with this animation. So at the moment it's just the timer. So the timer is the, the X and the X is always uh, adding to it. So it's more like a, it's not, yeah, it's a timer. Yeah. So CPU fan is already here. So now it should be able to work, right? There's and a now it should there. show you any value between zero and eight. So instead of the milliseconds, what it will do, that's like the, the, yeah, the, 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 the problem animation. is uh, this uh, overlay data is uh, set up to update uh, every single second. Yeah. So uh, the animation is uh, set every 60, 16 milliseconds, so 60 FPS, you could say. Mm. So that's why it's more fluent than the other sensor. So this one updates more frequently than the other ones. So 60 times more. So the so at the moment it's still uh, so, uh, enabled as fan top animation timer because we copied it. So uh, let's choose the fan bottom animation timer, and now we should be able to see it spinning. Yeah. Yay! Yep. So um, we can also copy this layer, for example. Ah, oh, we don't need to do it. We can just add a new one. And instead of the text, we just go to CPU fan because we want to show the RPM. The value, and if yeah. You, you just don't want to just have the text label, but the actual value. And RPM is added to the back automatically, so that's easy. And then you have the CPU fan RPM. Um, of course, we might choose the same color as we have the rest of uh, our overlay. And we want to scale it down to the same size as the rest. As you can see, the. Um mm -hmm. Oh, wait, hang on. It has a, a little dip every now and again that I think yeah, yeah, maybe the th sensor That's the data. same as in an uh, yeah. uh, HW. Like maybe a, is, it, is that, could that be a gap in the sensor data? That, yeah, that, that's because the motherboard mm. is not accurate at low RPMs. Mm, so that, that's the, uh, we see that also with uh, a, a very high end uh, air coolers. They, they, they spin around 400 to 500 RPM. Yeah. Usually the, the fan. Uh, the, the, the fan sensor in the motherboard is not really equipped well for, for that kind of. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you can see it's aligned too much to the top left. So let's go to the middle and then it should be dropping to the bottom middle. So let's also put the temperature back. It looks like it's invisible. So that's because, oh, behind the it's fan behind, animation. So we need to make this uh, layer move to top. Okay, <laughs> so we can slide this under. There you go. 
There we go. It's a bit of fiddling, but yeah, I, it's it, you have to get used to the mechanics of it yeah. a little bit, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff that can be done with it. So uh, let's do this one in the middle as well, yeah. and we had this one it's basically layered on top and this is the second our second fan we can just add it yeah. so that's how we, we customize it a little bit and you can um, save it as uh, an overlay file or you can also export it as an OVX file so the OVL file is basically the HTML file uh, the markup and uh, you also need to copy the, the, the picture with it, uh, so that, that's where the, the fan and the logos are. Um, and also th this animation. But the if sprites. you do the OVX, yeah. it packs it into one uh, sort of a zip file, and you can import and export it in Overlay Editor. Hmm. So, for example, uh, uh, what's the other one called? So, this one's called RTSS Only. And that's the name I gave it because it only uses sensors from RTSS. So Riva Tuna <laughs> Statistics Server. Yeah, that's a nice tongue breaker, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, so um, modified, uh, learn how to type first. <laughs> Modify root. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can add a date to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever. So keep keep track of it. For example, if you want to keep evolving it, let's say, uh, yeah. Or, yeah, or say uh, this is uh, on an Intel platform, and you, yeah. you can um, at the moment, for example, the, the this is a a thirteen six hundred K, so it has a performance cores and E cores, so you could even split that up as well. Um, the, the the data it uses uh, from Riva Tuner is the P core, so. That's basically also the most interesting uh, you want, at least during gaming. Yes. So um, I, I just leave it at that. But uh, if you want to uh, make sure or double check, uh, you can always uh, run the, the HW info on the site. It's already in it. Yep. And double check the, the speeds as well. Or If there's a new CPU platform coming out and Riva Tuner doesn't offer you the clock speed yet, mm -hmm. then you can always uh, choose a clock from yeah. HW Info. Uh, the same goes also for AIDA, so very similar. Uh, I believe you have to go to the. Oh, it's already open, see? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it uses the, the same name. So if you want to give this um, sensor data to uh, access to, to Riva Tuner, you also need to enable shared memory here. Actually, it's a, it, there is a specific uh, feature that was mentioned there. If you yeah, that, there's another one. Yeah, but I don't know what that does because. If I just enable it, this it one. actually mentioned uh, the uh, OSD. There you go, the top, the bottom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Enable writing sensor values to Riva Tuner OSD server. So it, it sounds like it, it's specifically um, engineered towards that, uh, yeah, that functionality. I think that's then it's initiated by AIDA, mm. and the other way is that it's read from Riva Tuner. So. I think hmm. it works uh, different directions. So, okay. Uh, Aida, here you go. Then this is all the uh, the sources or sensor data that yeah. uh, Aida is offering. So if something is missing um, in HW Info, if it's missing in Afterburner or Riva Tuner, you can hmm. always have a uh, shop around a fourth yeah. Uh, yeah. A data source. Um, uh, one thing I also like about uh, AIDA and uh, about HW Info is that they add new stuff all the time. So, for example, uh, I could even, um, th this is a very fancy power supply, maybe a bit overkill for this system, but yeah. um, it's the AI 1300P, and you, you have this kind of sensor information right in HW Info or in AIDA, so you can really uh, show you lots of data. So if you want to have the total power stuff uh, added to your OSD, that should be quite easy. Or even I saw something like PSU efficiency, which is also efficiency, something that's quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, let's do both. Um, 
I think. There you go. Yeah, efficiency is below that. Yeah, efficiency, there you go. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So that basically tells you how much power your, well, at least your system is used, not not the monitor and you know, not not the no. other things, but everything. You know, your your case, let's say, and everything connected to that. So uh, your peripherals are are should be included because they're connected to the motherboard. And you can add, of course, BSU power out. So this is pretty cool. John Doe on Twitch is asking if we, you can have the red version too, please. Well, uh, we could, but I mean, uh, I just showed you uh, earlier as well How that you can actually, colors, yeah. yeah, you can you can actually quite easily customize it and, and make it red if you want to. I mean, just follow the steps and um, and you know you should be able to do that in a couple of minutes. And you can decide if you if you only want uh, you know sort the, the the graphics to be red or uh, if you want everything red. So it's it's really up to you. You can make it look exactly how you want it to. You can have a unicorn rainbow vomit overlay too if you wish. Yeah, yes, if you true. wish, yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. So now we. If you want to have it an animated unicorn rainbow vomit overlay, then you might require a little bit more work. But yeah, here you go. So at the at the very bottom, you can see indeed we just added the, yeah. the PSU power uh, output, uh, which is the total wattage, and also the efficiency. So as you see, it's 90 yeah. 90 percent at the moment. And also um, the, the amount of uh, VRAM it's using. So uh, the, we could put a text in front of it as yeah. well. So the, the PSU power uh, out is the output that it's uh, using in the system, right? So that means that, that 90%, you should add 10% yeah. to it to have like what yeah. it's drawing yeah, yeah, at the exactly. wall, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because so the efficiency is 90%. Yeah, so about 28 yeah. watts adding to it, and it's about 305 um, yeah. yeah. watts. That should or so. be what it's yeah. pulling from the, from the socket. Yeah. It should be quite accurate, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I want to uh, By show the way, you. And, and also there, that's, we can read this data because of the power supply, because it has these sensors, it, it yeah, offers yeah, it, these data. Yeah, so it has a USB port exactly. that's connected to the motherboard, yeah. and that's how yeah. it reads the, Otherwise, the, the sensor indeed. data. Because yeah. there's a big chance, if, I mean, you probably, there's a big chance you don't have a, a big fancy power supply like this, maybe, because this is quite yeah. new. Um, so there's a big chance that, you know, this kind of data, unfortunately, might not be available uh, to you. but. Hey, you know, it, it just shows you the potential and uh, yeah. the, the number of data points and, and uh, statistics that can be used. It um, also shows you how, how frequently the, the, the HW Info uh, and, and AIDA are updated with the, this kind of sensor data. It's, yeah. it's really amazing. Yeah. And they work quite closely with MSI as well um, to get this information and, and w what sensor means what. So th they have a hardware address okay, this is outputting this number, and this number means that. So, yeah. yeah. They, they have to make have sense of it. it it's yeah. not like if there's a sensor, they can they can do anything with it. They no, really they have, have to, to do a translation. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They have to yeah. make it into, uh, they have to you know, quantify it and make sure that they know, classify it even, and say, okay, so this is, in this case, a power supply, and it, it's saying uh, how much watts. And yeah. Now, one thing I want to show what I also uh, do when we have a other live stream and I use this overlay. I, I, I switch between uh, having the overlay on the left or on the right, <laughs> making bigger and smaller depending on the resolution and stuff. Um, that's also part of the, uh, the uh, do it again, <laughs> uh, the Riva Tuner part and it's the other plugin called Hotkey Handler. So if you enable the Hotkey Handler, at the moment it's not uh, there's nothing selected here. There's um, no hotkeys configured. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's normal. Um, all the files that we show today are inside 
the program folder of Riva Tuner. So that's program files x86 and then go to Riva Tuner statistics server, then to plugins, to client, to overlays. And here you can see hey, they copied is. the file, the OVL file and the PNG file. So that's the picture file. That's where you all can the just visuals open are. it. Yeah. And here you can see, and this is the the animation sprite for the uh, the CPU usage and the GPU usage, and this is for the fan. Uh, this is the the first logo that didn't work that well, so I created another one. <laughs> and, yeah. and this one um, is used. Uh, uh, these are just copied from the uh, sample file, yeah. and I decided not to use those. Yeah. Um, uh, not sure if the sample file. Yeah, you can still open use the sample files not. below yeah. there. So if you can you open that one at the bottom. Uh, this one. No, no, the the the, the PNG file. Oh yeah. There, mm -hmm. there you can see. So yeah. There you go. Yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, the the early uh, version of the sample file didn't have this animation. So this is mm -hmm. the uh, the frames per second one. This is the dial. Yeah. And this one is not used either. So mm -hmm. maybe this is the previous version of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this sprite is, um, it works differently. It, it's not using uh, uh, sections like this, but it, it, it uses rotation. So it has an angle yeah. uh, to depend, indicate. Yeah, yeah. Making a calculation, okay, uh, in zero it's minus 128 degrees. And um, um, yeah. <laughs> so if you want math challenges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really creative. It's, yeah, uh, it is. It's it is. Really it is interesting, interesting how we made it work. It's, if you uh, like challenges yeah. like that, yeah. this is something that uh, hats really off to the program. It's, yeah. uh, it's really, really interesting. I mean, you know, yeah. inventing something like that and, and making it work into, uh, into a layout like that, that's really good. Yeah. So the, the, the hotkey handler uh, CFG file. That's where all the information is here, and um, you can also. There's also a video about that uh, on the YouTube of uh, Alexei, and um, I also have one customized for, uh, during my um, my live streams. Mm. So now I just copied my file uh, to the the folder, and. If I open this, it should give you, okay, recording is Control shift 8 and zoom in OSD. This is a custom created one. It's Control shift 3 Control shift 4 is zoom out, mm -hmm. and OSD left and right is 1 or 2. So, and the toggle on screen, I also have it here. Yeah. Uh, so, you see me do that all the time, so if we have the OSD on the left side, I can just press the 2 and it moves to the right. So that, eh, depending on, on how the game is, is oriented or, or yeah. maybe on the right side there will be like a FPS counter from the in-game FPS counter. So you want to move it to the other side. Uh, or there's a menu on the left and we move it to the right side depending on uh, how the game is uh, laid out. Yeah. Um, also if you go from now we're just running in uh, full HD, so the 1080p. Uh, but if we go to 4K, then this OSD will be very small. So we need to be able to uh, to make it larger if the resolution goes up. Yeah. And that's so how I readable. Yeah. designed the, the overlay hotkeys as well. So you can play with that as well. Um, but also that needs a lot of tinkering and yeah. uh, uh, spending time on it. But there's a good video on that part uh, from uh, the, the programmer of Afterburner as well. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that covers at least the part of the uh, custom OSD and uh, how you get the basic one, but also how to customize a lot of the options. Um, maybe this is a nice time to uh, do another giveaway. And because we, we took a little time to uh, you know really go through the tutorial side of things and how to, mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's do two um, to make up for lost time, let's say. Uh, <laughs> so you can still participate. <laughs> you can go to msi.com slash two slash insider or uh, of course uh, on YouTube and Twitch in the chat, our bot is uh, putting the link every five minutes to the Gleam giveaway. Uh, and there you can participate. The more actions you perform, the bigger your chance of winning. And uh, yeah, if you're a regular viewer, you participate regularly, you have bonus points that you can throw in there as well. And uh, during the live stream, we will pick random winners from all the participants. 
um, and uh, we will uh, yeah we will announce uh, the two next winners right now. Um, the two next winners. The first one is called Arzog, R R Z O O G. Congratulations, R R Z O O G, Arzog. Um, and the uh, second winner for right now, a third winner of today, is called Cad Cad Crabbles, C A D Crabbles. Um, congratulations! You also win uh, both win a Steam wallet code, which will be sent out to you as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will do one more giveaway in a few minutes um, for this live stream. And now I think we yeah. Because we've covered most of the stuff, uh, I think we can now have a bit more look at a chat. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, uh, this would be the time. And now we yeah. can we can go into things if you if you want. Uh, yeah, we wanted to kind of you know cordon off the part about the tutorial because that that will make it easier to follow if somebody's really looking on how to uh, or trying to learn how to how to customize the, the overlay. So if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, Dushan is uh, thanking us. A very uh, educative thank you. Uh, well, you're welcome. You're we're, welcome. Uh, we're glad you liked it. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit in the in, on the deep end, let's say, uh, uh, and and a bit detailed. But uh, you know, yeah, I'm least... nerdy, so you get nerdy stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. That's right? how you get yeah, it. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I mean, we we intentionally did two things, right? So we we kind of we provided you the link with the basic version that only uses RTSS uh, data. So yep. you can basically, within a couple of seconds, have this uh, up overlay running. up yep. and running. Uh, because if you just like how it looks and you don't really want to change anything, that's great. It will work. Um, but we, of course, also showed you all, well, also showed you now uh, a lot of things on how to change, how to customize. If you just, like, you know, like the guy asking earlier, oh, but, uh, it's nice, but can I have it in red? Yeah, you can do that now. Uh, yeah, and you, yeah. you you know you know how to do that so you can you can make it purple you can make it rainbow if you want that's all up to you now um so yeah if you want every every part of the uh, uh fan animation to have a different color of the rgb spectrum for example so that it changes color constantly <laughs> yeah. just like your fans in your real yeah. case for example hey that's possible you yeah, can do that there, there's even dynamic coloring possible by the the value so if you say, for example, the, the, the CPU temperature, when it goes above 70, oh, yeah. you yeah. can make it red and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah. you need to watch the other video from Alexa, not from me. Yeah, <laughs> but no, exactly. it's really there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. can do it. Yeah. Uh, Dusan is asking one question. Uh, do these files need to be uh, zip RAR or need to be extracted them to use an overlay? Oh, you, I think, yeah, you missed that part. So we provide them in a zip file, I believe. Yeah. Um, so you need to unzip it indeed. It's a, it's a, a OVX file, right? Yeah. Um, to overlay uh, exchange, I believe. And um, yeah, so you need to unzip that and that you can load into your setup yeah. in a Riva the, Tuner. The statistics step is called server. import. So if you have the overlay editor open, yeah. then go to the file import and then you can just point to the OVX file yeah. you just extracted from the zip file. Yes. If I, maybe we can scroll back because I did see a lot of questions earlier as well. Uh, I'm always scared. Uh, Corsair Scat on uh, TikTok was uh, saying that they were a bit scared to mess with something because they're scared of messing things up. I, I can imagine that. I mean, I, I felt the same way a you know, long time ago when I first got eyes of, of this software. It seems very, you know, a bit overwhelming and a bit like, oh, what if I mess something up? I better not touch anything. Um, but really, you can't mess things up too bad and you can always pretty much reset things yeah. as well. And I mean, the things we were doing today was purely monitoring. So you're, act you're not actually changing anything about the behavior no. of the hardware so it's not really messing with anything uh, because you also said uh, i can see uh, does this hurt the gpu no well we can ask it <laughs> but no it, it it's, honestly it's and even if we did yet, overclocking so, no. the worst really that can happen is um it can become unstable as in you know it, for example if you overclock it too far or under underclock it or under volt it too far um it can become unstable uh, then it will you know black screen let's say just it, so it will your screen can start flickering, it will become black for a moment, and then it will restore. And then you can basically just um, uh, reset to the default values, and then you're fine again. 
So really, that's the worst that can happen. Um, uh, by this. default, the the over voltage part is is disabled. Yeah, so as well. Yeah. So unless you specifically enable it, um, yeah. all you can do is is you know play with the clock speeds a bit, and and really that doesn't yeah. uh, so that, that poses no yeah. danger. But even I mean the, the voltage part. Uh, in, I think curr in current generations, the overvolting is so minimal. Yeah, it's limited. Yeah, yeah. very limited. So, so even there, it, uh, without doing uh, hard mods, you know, like actual yeah. soldering and stuff, uh, I don't really think even by throwing everything to the max, it, it can mm. damage yeah. the GPU really. Uh, because if it even if it gets close, there's still um, like security systems or what you, you want to call it um, in place from nvidia and, and from us let's say that if you for example reach a critical threshold when it comes to temperature that the gpu will will take measures to for example start down clocking uh, if it cannot raise the uh, fan uh, speed more than than what is necessary so it, it there's all kinds of built-in uh, security measures there to to kind of you know protect the hardware um john doe is asking can you reshow us where you have to uh, where where you go to have total computer watt consumption, please? That was actually a uh, thing that's specifically part of the uh, what's it called MEG? Well, the, the you know our top of the line power supply at the moment. Yeah. M MEG uh, thirteen hundred PAI or something the AI like thirteen hundred. Oh AI, there you go. Yeah. I got it yeah, backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. but that's basically our top of the line uh, uh, power supply indeed. And so one of the features yeah. that it has is indeed that it offers all but this kind of information. You can use a trick. I can show you. Oh. If you want. If we still have time. Uh, it depends on how long you need. Uh, maybe uh, five to ten minutes. Does it, does it include reading it out from software? Yes. <laughs> no, actually, you can combine two wattages, like if you uh, take the GPU watts and the CPU watts, mm. then um, uh, uh, those are the two major the, Then you will yeah. see what is currently the peak, plus adding some offset, of course. Yeah, yeah you because need to the account motherboard, for the memory, the SSD, they will exactly. have yeah. you know, pretty consistent kind of power. Yeah. yeah, but you can make a calculation that is. Um, uh, estimating how much power you're using at that time. I've even, I'm not sure if that's possible, but I heard people uh, using like one of those smart electricity plugs as well, like yeah, literally, yeah. And, and that you can read that out and maybe include that data, uh, although I I'm not sure if you, you can. You can read that out because normally no. that will post to a website or a, yeah. an app, a cloud, uh, like a, yeah. a phone app or, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so then you need to capture that as well. So that, that yeah. They didn't offer that kind of <laughs> uh, app integration yet, so maybe in the future. Yeah. But yeah, that's also possible, yeah. But you can, yeah, make calculations as well, and that, that so I used that before as well uh, to find the peak power of CPU and GPU at the same time. Uh, but yeah. It's not 100% accurate, no. but it's. Uh, it gives you a pretty good idea because indeed, like the idea. GPU yeah. and the CPU are the two major uh, yeah. components that will draw the most power, let's say. But it it can be quite diff different. Different uh, if you, for example, if you have a lot of hard drives connected to your PC, uh, that that will draw a bit more. Um, uh, plus, if you have peripherals connected, like uh, I don't know, external hard drives, USB hard drives. Um, maybe a charging dock for your phone or something. I mean, all these things are not really, um, you know, th those would not be included in that calculation. So you have to account no. for that. No. No. But you could, you could put like a, an analog, or it's not an analog, but a, a wall meter, yeah. read it out what it's doing in idle and guesstimate this is about what the motherboard, the memory, the SSD, the hard drives, the, the keyboard, the mouse is drawing from the system, from the power supply. You get it, yeah, but still, it's, it's, so a, it's let's a, say a close that's estimation. Watts. Yeah, so you can yeah. make a calculation of CPU plus GPU uh, dynamic sensor data plus 70 watts is your system. Uh, wallet. Yeah. But you need but to make you, sure you can, that your components yeah. that you are using are um, 
you know, if they are all in idle or power saving modes, I don't know, like the, the peripherals you've got connected, like, I don't know. Yeah, but the, the memory USB doesn't really uh, fluctuate that much and the SSD doesn't fluctuate. No, that's that true. Much. That's true. I think Plus, the, the thing that could do most is like phone, you know, phone charger, for example, yeah, on the USB then port. Just don't do that while you're doing the monitoring part. No, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's easier said than done, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. No, but that can, I mean, if you're talking about how many watts indeed, then probably that would be, I don't know what is the major, like the max charging, how many watts you can do through USB these days. Uh, depends on, uh, for the motherboard, not that much. No, exactly. And the case is an extension of the motherboard, I guess, so you, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not, you know, it will have to go through that, but like 15 watts is not uncommon, I guess, right? I think 15 watts is about the maximum. Pretty much, yeah. But it's the USB-C maximum, I think. Yeah, yeah there you go. So anyway. At, at least the, the, the Thunderbolt one, yeah. 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 Anyway, but I mean, that's, at least you get a good idea. Um, but with this overlay, you can also do calculations and, and dynamic <laughs> values and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So you can uh, customize it as, 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 as you want. As, uh, but you, but you better possible. have a degree in algebra, though. That's... <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it sounds com more complicated yeah, it than is, it really yeah. is. Well, uh, but that's a lot of yeah. things. You know, if you break it down into smaller steps and you, and you start, you know, messing around with it, and you, you unravel one thing and then the next, then it usually it becomes more manageable. Uh, but yeah, f at first sight, it's it's quite daunting, and you're like, oh, well, okay, wow, um, <laughs> where do I even start? But at least, you know, this live stream and and I think your explanation helped with that. At least you know it opens the door, and it shows with a couple of uh, practical examples how to get started and, and um, what kind of logic is applied here. Um, yeah, I think this pretty much wraps it up for now. Eric is, uh, is watching our stream. Always nice to see that Eric is watching. He says, I told you with Peter this stream would take ages. We're not quite at ages yet, Eric. Don't worry. I mean, I'm trying to stretch it. You're right. <laughs> We could go on for a couple of hours, but I don't, th I don't think we're, we're going to do that. Um, I only have 12 SSDs all up for my rig, 10 on board and two external. Wow, 12 SSDs. That's a lot. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I think this might be a good moment to, to do one last giveaway. Uh, and then uh, we're probably going to uh, end the live stream. So, yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, you know, last questions for this live stream, now would be the time to, to ask while we draw our final winner for today. Um, and the last winner's name is Avmat, A-V Matt. Congratulations, A-V Matt. Uh, we will also send a, a Steam wallet code to you very, very soon. I uh, hope you enjoy it. And yeah, if no other questions, then uh, maybe we can show what we'll be up to next week. Actually, we can't tell you yet. So you'll have to uh, join next week on Wednesday, the 24th of May, uh, same time, same place, to find out what we're going to be talking about. Congratulations to all the winners. Uh, thank you, everybody that uh, joined for the live stream. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. At least now you have a way to uh, replicate that really cool looking uh, on-screen display uh, format that you see us using, uh, courtesy of Ruud again. Uh, thank you, Ruud, for providing that. Hey, I just added the math. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's have, let's uh, have a look. Okay. Let's have one a look. second, one second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, I just added a data source okay. and just took the, the CPU power of the, um, the Riva tuner and then um, I just gave it a different name and just added this line. So adding the CPU power that's already here yeah. and the GPU one power that's already there. Yeah. But you have to make sure uh, it, it's uh, capitals or um, smaller symbols yeah. because it has to be uh, exact it, if you make match. yeah if you make a typo okay. it doesn't work mm. so now it just adds the cpu and the gpu together and you can just put it into uh, a new layer and yeah. so on and so shows on. you the total so that that's how it works yeah. so if if the math is easy you can do it <laughs> Yeah, 
Well, I mean, this so, again shows you how, how relatively easy, if you, if you manage to figure it out, how it works, uh, you can add things like this. Um, yeah. That's yeah, it. Dushan, <laughs> indeed. Uh, Computex coverage soon. I mean, we, we always cover Computex, so uh, you can count on it. Yes, um, we will cover everything from, uh, from MSI, from uh, Computex coming up, of course. Uh, but again, that's something we're not, we're not really allowed to talk about yet. So you're going to have to join that live stream to find out. Um, yeah, thanks, everybody for uh, joining the live stream. Uh, hope to see you guys next week. Uh, I will be here and uh, yeah, take care in the meantime. Thank you for watching. Have fun with the overlay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.